Today we're going to talk about how to build a day trading crude oil futures trading system for TradeStation MultiCharts or NinjaTrader. Please read the disclaimer. In three years GSB has improved dramatically and the ability of GSB users to use GSB has also made big leap forwards. What's also helped is that GSB users have collaborated together to share things to their mutual advantage. A community of users can accomplish much more than a single user. We've spent about six months work on crude oil with a steady stream of improvements. We're gonna cover getting the correct setup for crude oil. A lot of things are unique to crude oil and they are absolutely critical to get right. We need to find the best indicators. This gives a very big improvement in results. Then we need to build 50,000 systems and we pick the top 250 of the 50,000. Then we do the statistics of a number of out of sample periods. If you want to improve things, you change only one thing and then you repeat the entire process. If you change two things, you can no longer be sure of what change helped. Identical tests can also give significant variation due to the different random seed used each time in building systems. If your second identical test is very similar, that might be okay, but if not, you can repeat this up to four times. This is not critical to do, but it's an optional extra. In video part two in the private forum, we'll cover things to consider changing. At the moment, we're not looking for a system, but groups of systems that we know are robust. And then we're gonna pick the top families and choose one or two systems that we will consider for live trading. After that, we'll validate the systems with a significantly large out of sample period. In more detail, we're gonna look at my crude oil out of sample results. We're also gonna look at a good crude oil system that you get when you purchase GSB. We're gonna look at great detail of how to choose the correct indicators using the two pass method. We're going to look in great detail exactly what you need to do to set up GSB for crude oil. And we're going to understand the GSB architecture. That way GSB won't be a black box, but you'll understand what GSB is doing internally. The system is fairly new and I started trading this on the 27th of February. This was just pre the COVID era and results here are to the middle of April 2020. So you can see there that we've had 12 points, eight trades, which is 12,000 US dollars profit, excluding brokerage. I should make a disclaimer in the fact that March and April was an incredibly good time for trading in the COVID era. Day trading tends to go well when you've got high volatility and good trending, and we had both. There were other successes too. For example, the free GSB SIS1 ES made me $21,112 less brokerage in March alone. Well, that was about 25,500 in March and April. That's trading one contract and that was made three years ago. The system is completely unchanged apart from a tweak in the exit and change in the stop size. You can get that system, unlocked code. If you go to my website, click on the videos link and then click on the how to get free GSB SIS 500 day trading system. The private forum has got a further tiny little tweak that gives you similar profits, but a bit less drawdown and a bit less trades, but that's for GSB purchases only. But what you see the results of there is actually the system that's free for all trial users to have as unlocked code. Or you can look at my system RC2 DAX, which was the first system made by the predecessor to GSB. It was a command line dreadful to use program, but it was proof of concept. Now that system has not been changed or optimized for many, many years. And this is only a portion of the out of sample results. I don't have the track record in IB link before that, but this system alone made 47,000 euros in March and April. That includes some significant execution screw ups too. 
So the point I'm making is making $12,000 in crude oil in two months is not normal market conditions. And we even had some unheard of situations where crude oil futures price actually went into significant negative territory. I also should disclaim that not all systems made money. Some lost, some lost badly. But collectively, it was actually probably my best ever couple of months in my trading career. But if you look at the system here, the average trader is going to stop when they've hit a maximum drawdown probably of twice of what they've had previously and completely miss the huge run up. That's some of the problems when it comes to live trading. So what's unique to crude oil compared to other markets? The secondary filter is different and there's many options of good secondary filters. We're going to cover that in a few slides. We're not using walk forward. On S&P 500, walk forward makes a really significant improvement in performance. We didn't get improvement in performance in crude oil. We're not using multi time frame bars to build the systems. For example, on the S&P, we used 29, 30 and 31 minute bars, and that gave significantly more robust and better out of sample results on the S&P 500. This might work on crude oil, but to be honest, I don't think it was even needed. The systems are really robust in my opinion, but proof of that will be what the outer sample results are like. We're not using 80 periods of in sample data and then 80 periods of out of sample data as additional out of sample periods in system building. We do, however, use this in the indicator selection, which gives us a great deal more robustness because we know that the indicators and out of sample results by themselves gave good results. Our family is a group of systems that have the same indicators but are not identical. And normally, the parameters or a few other things will differ. A family with many members means the system is robust regardless of the parameters. On the S&P 500, we'll use entry mode of cross, while as on crude oil, we'll use compare to. How we came up with the 15 and 30 minute bars is we repeated this entire methodology to get a benchmark of statistics. And we had multiple out of sample periods. On the top 250 of the 50,000 systems we made, it was clear that 15 minute data one and 30 minute data two worked much better than all other combinations. The other thing is the first hour is critical that we use the data, but we don't actually take entries in the first hour. This was found entirely by accident. We're using exchange time in all examples. This should reduce confusion because the time is critical to get right on crude oil. It's really good if you can understand what the GSB architecture is. Now this is very oversimplified, but we normally use three indicators sometimes more or less, but normally three, and multiply them together. If the results are greater than zero, we have an uptrend, and if it's less than zero, a downtrend. But we also have a secondary filter, and that's normally based on yesterday's close. If you're above the close, you go long, assuming that the indicators multiplied together are positive, and if they're negative, then you go short, if the close is below yesterday's close. All indicators are normalized, which means regardless of the actual values, they will fit in a range of minus 100 to plus 100 over the last 100 bars. What we've done that's unique to crude oil is to use yesterday's high instead of yesterday's close. This works dramatically better. Note also that the secondary filter using yesterday's high is also normalized. So far we've found roughly about 12 secondary filters that are better than the close D filter, which is the previous day's close. This is going to be covered in great detail in part two of the video in the private members forum. A lot of these secondary filters are not yet in the trial version of GSB, but that will happen more over time. Portfolio Analyst, which is another trade made product, showed that the choice of secondary filters gives a dramatically low correlation 
of losing days, losing weeks and losing months. I even tried when I had the identical trading system and all I did was change the secondary filter and I got very low correlation on losing days. And it's the correlation on losing days that concerns me because if you have systems that all lose at the same time, you're in trouble. You'll get quite high drawdowns. The great thing about Portfolio Analyst Pro is it also gives you correlation of negative and positive days. And we can see that the correlation on winning days was actually really high. What that's implying is we tend to catch the big moves and the moves that fail, the systems are less likely to catch and they're quite diversified depending on what secondary filter you get. That's going to mean that your drawdowns and losing trades are more diversified with different secondary filters. So I think the previous high filter is probably the best secondary filter, but the other secondary filters are really useful because of their diversity. To select the best indicators, we use every second group of 80 days in sample and every alternate 80 days out of sample for the end of February 2018. Dates after February 2018 are used as out of sample. In this video, we're not going to use any data after the end of February 2018. This gives us a really good amount of out of sample data to confirm that your system is valid. I'm running the manager of GSB and I'm going to go through the settings. All of these will be recorded in a macro because it's too easy to make an error here. So you can see that I've got 44 indicators set up here. The beta version of GSB actually has 101, but we're not going to use any of those today. Everything here should be in the trial version that's being used. So we've got 44 indicators that are used, even though we see 46, it's going naught to 45. And the reason is indicator nine, close list previous close D is superseded by the one below it with BPV. So close D is turned off and roofing filter one pole is superseded by the one below it. So that's also turned off. We have only one secondary filter used and that is close less previous high D. You can see that is enabled there as true. The operators were using multiply only, entry mode. This is critical to get right on crude oil. And there's no way you should be using all indicators modes at once. You should only use one at a time. So we're using the compare to mode. Do not use other entry modes on crude oil. There are a few extra settings on my version of GSB, but they're all set to the defaults and the trial version should be fine for all of this. Tertiary filters are about to be released, but that's still not running yet. All the parameters are set to default under here. The data, we're running session time of 9 o'clock to 14.30 and 15 and 30 minute bars. Now what I've done to prove that there's no cheating and looking ahead in my results is I took a copy of my data file and you can see this one here is 65 meg and the one I'm using is 59 meg. I've removed any data after February the 28th, 2019. So that gives us over a year out of sample results. The dates on indicator testing we're using February 2018. What's really important is the time is 10 o'clock start. So we're not trading or taking entries on the first hour, but the indicators are using the data. Again, what's really important is nth day is no trade. When we build a system and then when it appears in GSB, it turns to trade. So everything we're seeing in GSB in the indicator testing is out of sample. Our stop loss is 1000. And I'm going to call this pass one. Now, so that all the users can get the same settings, because it's too problematic because of human error, I'm going to make a new macro and I'm going to call it settings full. And I'm going to click pull partial settings. 
Now that has pulled all the settings in GSB apart from the data files into the macro and I'm going to save this as macro 6 CL indicator test. Now that will be found in the file repository. To find the file repository when you log into the TradeMade forum you can just do a search on repository and I'm going to put the macro used in the top section here. So make sure I'm going to right click M6 and that will remove any macro there. I'm going to click on M6, click here, OK, run the macro and that way everyone is running the same settings. Now I'm going to hit play and GSB is going to begin building systems. Indicator testing is not a fast process. I am fortunate that I'm blessed with many servers and under reporting graph we can see the amount of workers that I've got. If you're a trial user you want to run as many workers as RAM and CPU permit on your own machine and you should pick up some workers on the free GSB cloud. How many you pick up will depend greatly on how much the cloud has been used by other users and myself. Now you can see up the top right it says searching and that will take a few minutes for workers to appear. So you can see here that I've got about 120 workers and this section isn't on the trial users version of the manager but you can see that I've got 11 computers running but a trial user will tend to get the workers of their own computer plus a small portion of what happens to be on the cloud which will vary a lot from one time to another. So we need to give this a fair bit more time to complete because we're only up to about 22,000 and I'm aiming for 50,000 systems. So I've now built 50,000 systems. I'll do Alt B and we can see here the indicators that are selected. Using the first pass we're going to select the green and orange ones. I do that by clicking the first entry and clicking the bottom entry of the orange. If I wanted to deselect one I could press Control and hold that down and click highest for example. If we had a hundred indicators we would only be selecting the green ones here. So what I'll then do apply to optimization settings. I'll do yes then I will do file save as and I will save to video pass 2. So you can see here we've got the 28 indicators and I'm going to type in pass 2 here and I'll complete the whole process again and we can see here the indicators that have been chosen. I'll click on the top there, hold down shift, click on slow K and deselect the orange ones. So for the second pass we're only going to choose the green ones. We can actually vary this a fair bit by choosing a few more or less but that's covered elsewhere in the video. Do not get too overzealous adding additional indicators here because your overall system metrics are going to drop. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to apply to optimization settings and I'll do yes and I'll do file save as and save to video build. For building systems we need to change the amount of indicators to three we also need to change nth day mode from no trade to all and we need to leave auto nth day to blank. So that means everything in our in sample period 2018 is going to not use the nth mode anymore. Now to simplify this whole process I'm going to right click M5, left click M5 and I'm going to click on the M5 from the file repository to open and when I run that macro you'll see for example how this changes from 2 to 3. Then I'll do file save optimization settings and call it build again because this is the settings that I actually used. Then I'll hit start and this will produce another 50,000 systems. 
So I've now built 50,000 systems and I'm going to run macro 1. You'll get this macro in the file depository, but to clear any macro that you've got already on macro 1, right click and we'll turn it off. Click M1 and then we're going to assign it to this file here, which you'll get on the file depository. Hit the play button and that's going to get the top 250 systems and put them into favorites A. You can see on the right hand side where it says active, how it's climbing up to 100% so you can actually see the progress of the macro doing that. The statistics in A is going to be the in sample results. In B it's our first out of sample period from 2018, 2019 into February. In C it's from 2019 March to the end of the year. And the last period is from 2020 onwards. In this demonstration, I'm not using any data in 2020, which gives you an extra out of sample period that you can validate in TradeStation. So the out of sample results are very acceptable. You can see in the first period there, we've made $5,000 with a 1700 drawdown average trade, very healthy $199. There's no slippage in commission yet, but that's still quite acceptable. Profit factor 2.32, so again, great. The next period, which is from March 2019 to the end of 2019, we've made even higher average trade, lower drawdown, much higher profit factor. So these are very acceptable figures. Now I want to talk about establishing a benchmark. To improve your systems, you need to make a benchmark of results. Then you change one thing at a time. For example, we used 15 and 30 minute bars, but you could try 15, 30 and 60 minute bars. You could also use the whole process here with more indicators that are available to GSB purchasers, and then even more indicators if you're in beta tester mode. And note the amount of indicators will be increasing over time in GSB. If you change more than one thing when you build systems, you no longer know what change brought about change in performance. You also need to keep in mind that there's some variation each time you run this methodology. This means to be sure of your improvement, you need to test multiple times. For example, the first time I ran this test, I omitted using 2020 data. To be safe, I wanted the GSP user to have some extra out of sample data as a precaution. I ran the same indicators used in the build process of this example, but included this time the 2020 data. The sum of all the fitnesses out of sample added up to 5993. Note also that eight indicators ended up in green and were used the first time we ran this test. In the other tests, it was 6 and then 5 and then 5. Note also, and this was coincidental, that the results happened to increase each time I did this test. And what's not coincidental is the out of sample performance happens to be inverse proportion to the amount of indicators that were used. In part 2 of this video, I'll show a table of the actual indicators that were used. Some were the same each time and some were unique to each individual test. I'm now going to show the family feature. First thing we need to check is, if I go to a graph there, you'll see there's no trades because the macro ran data in 2020 when we didn't have data in the 2020 data file. To get the dates changed back, best done by macro to avoid human error, and it's M2 all dates to 2018-02-28. I'll run that macro and give it a couple of minutes and all our dates will be back to ending in 2018 February. So that's the in sample period. And what I'm going to do is choose the best families in the in sample period. So if we go to graphs here, we can see that the dates end in February 2018. Now I'm going to do Alt B, Alt R, right click, and create update family. Now we can see here that we've got five families. Most of the systems are in family one. 
Now I'll explain what a family is. I'll do Alt B and go to parameters and you can see that the family has got DMI, lowest and SSRSI. If I expand on the family tab, we'll have 219 systems that are similar. You can see systems changing as I scroll down each member in the family. What's going to be changing is the parameters and possibly also if it's using data 1 or data 2 in each system. But the fact that we have 219 members in this family 1 means the family is really robust regardless of parameters. If I go to family 2, you'll see that it's similar, but we've got an indicator here of stochastic instead of RSI. So the fact that there's 219 members in that family means it's a really robust family, and regardless of the parameters, it's still very profitable. And this is a really good method of robustness testing. I like it better than most of the other methods that we've used in the past. So I want to take this system here, and there's 219 members in the family, but the top one will have the highest in sample fitness, and that's the one that we're going to choose. So I'm going to go to scripts, and I'm going to go to trade station, live trading, right click, let's put that into clipboard. And I'm going to paste it into TradeStation. F3 to verify. I'm going to insert strategy GSB video 1 family 12018. Most important that you have number of bars back. The study will reference to 500. And this is the point where I'm going to put slippage and permission on for the first time in this build process. I'm going to put one tick slippage each side and $2.40 commission. So everything here is out of sample since 2018, February the 28th. And nothing in this build process whatsoever has also seen 2020. So this is out of sample to about here. And the 2020 period, which we hadn't looked at at all, has also had a nice run up in equity too. Performance of 121,000 with 2.81 profit factor, a drawdown of 3,300. A particularly high intraday drawdown, which is unusual, on the 19th of May 2020. I could also do Family 2, which I'm less keen on because there's only 28 members. That's still quite okay, but if there's only a few members there, the system is less likely to be as robust as the system above it that has got many members. And you can see that system there, out of sample since here, still a reasonable result, but the equity curve isn't as linear as I would like. I'll now backtrack to how we can get more variation in systems, and keep in mind there's many secondary filters that can be used and they're very significant in the fact that they give very different results in correlation to losing trades but quite similar results in winning trades but for example this is pass one of the indicator test we could have just used only the green indicators which would have meant that we would have built on these ones here and then done a second pass or we could also go back to pass 2 and what we choose here we can vary a little bit too. Typically having less indicators and sticking to the ones at the top is going to give stronger systems but anything that happens to be over a ratio of about 0.5 in the top section I'd be happy to choose. For example here you could choose adaptive moving average or Bollinger Band upper. It's the sort of thing that you can experiment with but generally you want a high ratio and a high number of occurrences in the top one third of in the top 50,000 systems. Now what the ratio means here is 86% of the time lowest has appeared in the top one third of the systems as opposed to the bottom one-third. 
This is good to understand. If you filtered out indicators that work poorly by themselves, you're even less likely to have indicators that work poorly in a system, which often can hide the fact that there's one component of an indicator that isn't working well. What I'm going to do in part two of the video is show a table in these tests of what indicators we used and what the results were for each. And I'll show you, for example, systems that I've built and I've been live trading most of these since February, but a much better equity curve and that includes slippage and commission. And they're all fairly lowly correlated as far as the losing trades and highly correlated as far as the winning trades. All of these have got different secondary filters as well. So there are things that we can do that build systems with better out of sample results and better equity curves. And that's a few things were found often by accident after spending many months of work on crude oil. In part two, I want to explain all sorts of things that are going to help out of sample results. Some of them were found accidentally. I also want to explain the theory of why things work better and show you the practical outworking of the theory of things that gave significantly better out of sample systems and results to what we already have here. Thanks for watching the video. You can encourage the support of GSB by liking the video. And if you haven't tried GSB, there's a free 14 day trial.